Okay, this is a two-axis macro photography jig. You might ask yourself, why in the heck would you need such a thing? Um, I do a lot of work where I have to take really close photographs of electronic prototypes, and I need to get my camera in the uh, horizontal axes. But then uh, I also often have to take pictures of uh, test equipment of the same prototype under operation. And uh, that was kind of proving tricky with just a simple tripod, so I pulled together this quick jig here using some scrap wood I had in workshop, and... Uh, some really nice fittings from a company called Lee Valley. They make some uh, nice jigging fixtures. You can see right now the camera's uh, in, in the horizontal position. It's obviously very close to the, the prototype. That's uh, what macro photography is all about. Uh, but then I need to be able to rotate the camera up and move it up a little bit and get it into position so I can uh, take a picture of the uh, oscilloscope here on the horizontal axis. And I realize basically I need to gimbal it in three, uh, three axes here. I use a, a mini ball uh, fitting from a camera shop. They're uh, really easy to get. You just uh, go to any decent camera shop and you can get a fitting. They normally, of course, mount onto a, a commercial tripod. Um, and then I have uh, two pivot points on the axes here that uh, are adjustable with these uh, really nice uh, brass thumb screws. And then I built a, a really solid base. So uh, one thing that became pretty quickly apparent when I was trying to build my jig is that uh, the camera mount's a fair bit of tricky bit of engineering and uh, there really is no need to actually go ahead and try to design your own. Uh, you can go to a fairly good camera shop and uh, get ball head mounts that uh, normally would click into commercial tripods, but uh, if you just take the head, uh, and uh, the one I found, and it seems pretty easy to get, uh, is just screw mounted to this uh, simple piece of wood, and then uh, it gives you the ability to uh, move the camera uh, in the axis that you want, and uh, it just was quite cheap. So some more construction details, uh, these little brass screws actually were, uh, they have a really wonderful hand feel and uh, as I mentioned they come from Lee Valley, so uh, uh, something like that seems to work very well. The other thing I noticed, uh, I'll just take this apart here in a moment, but basically uh, in order to keep the thing from uh, moving you're basically relying upon friction between two parts and uh, I found that a little bit of uh, gasketing I found from a Canadian tire and then a uh, some actually emery cloth uh, gave a nice uh, ability to to lock the thing uh, st stable in place. Impregnated with um, some rubber, and then uh, I just actually have some uh, sanding cloth that's usually used for plumbing work to uh, to brighten up copper before you uh, solder them. Uh, that provides a nice friction fit so that when I uh, put the piece back on here and tighten it up with a um, a screw, it uh, really holds really firmly in place. In terms of the base, uh, I used a 2x4, uh, obviously just really cheap fur lumber. Um, inset it a little bit here with my table saw. It's actually really, really rigid. And then I got a couple C-clamps uh, holding onto my bench. Uh, the base then uh, obviously can lift it off my bench really easily when I'm not, uh, not using the jig and just sort of tuck it away. So there you have it. Uh, a really cheap, easy uh, two-axis uh, macro photography jig stand. Uh, didn't send me back much more than $40, $30 for the uh, little ball head, and um, you know, $10 for some uh, brass fittings, and uh, the rest I just uh, found in my workshop. So, well, hopefully that's of use to some people.